Piers has returned to discuss today's top stories and we're also joined by Andrew Neil. Welcome, Andrew. Thank you for being here this morning. So we're going to start Good off morning. obviously this was the news that came through yesterday. A ban on groups of more than six people gathering in homes, parks, pubs and restaurants in England is being imposed by Boris Johnson in the biggest coronavirus crackdown since rules ease. It seems there's going to be a lot more fines here. First offenders will be fined £100, which will then double on each further repeat offences up to 3200 So was this inevitable, do you think, Piers? Uh, yes, I think that we are at a very perilous moment, like I said earlier, in the pandemic, where having had this massive first wave in March, April, clearly case numbers are surging. Clearly, we're now seeing more deaths, 30 reported yesterday. Uh, and we're seeing a familiar pattern uh, mm -hmm. through Europe. So we have to take this moment seriously. What we don't want, any of us, is to go back to where we were a few months ago. So I think the government's right to do it. My issue with the stuff that they're announcing is, as with so much that they've done in this pandemic, so many mixed messages. It's so lacking in clarity. People don't really know what any of the rules now mean mm. or, or where they should be going and who with. And I think we need better messaging. And we've needed that from the start. People, I think people in this country are prepared to do what's required, mm. but please keep it simple and direct. Is there a lack of clarity, Andrew? I think there is a lack of clarity because uh, coming out of lockdown is almost going to be more difficult than going into lockdown because you, you, we went into lockdown overnight, uh, but we're coming out of lockdown in stages. Look, the, the government is clearly concerned about the rising number of cases. Uh, it was predictable that as we came out of lockdown, cases would rise. It was also predictable, as is happening, that the rates are rising fastest among young people, by far most cases now in the 17 to 29 age group. That will probably get worse as the universities go back uh, as well. Why the government, I think, is being cautious is that it wants to look and see does, does this increase in cases, will it then be reflected in a huge increase in fatalities? And uh, I think the government's right to be worried about that, but it shouldn't panic. In Spain and in France, which is uh, Spain in particular a couple of weeks ahead of us, France about uh, a week to 10 days ahead, there's been a huge increase in cases, but the fatalities have not been huge. 78 yesterday in Spain, 38 yesterday in France. Now, that's 78 and 38 too many. But in the grand scheme of things, it's not huge. And the evidence from countries who are a little bit ahead of us is that this increase in cases does not necessarily return us to the huge level of fatalities that we had in April, May and June. And I think the government wants to... is being cautious until it sees if that is the case. Do you think, and then do you think Andrew... Collapse. That's the that's the, the 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 number of fatalities drops because the people affected are as Piers was talking about earlier on youngsters who are saying you know I'm sick of this this is too long I am going out whereas the older members of the community are saying listen we are still being really careful here the ones who are most vulnerable. Yes, the evidence suggests that uh, there's been a move in the cases from the older generation to younger people, that these new cases are overwhelmingly concentrated among young people. And that probably explains why the fatalities are not so high, because we know now, we didn't know many months ago, we know now that younger people who get it are a lot less likely to die than people in their 60s, 70s and certainly 80s. And I think that could explain why the rise in cases now does not automatically transfer itself into a huge increase in fatalities and deaths. Um, okay. I, think the, I think the problem on that is that there's a lag in all these things. I think what worried them is, despite yesterday in the number of deaths reported, was the highest on a daily basis since the end of July. And what they're worried about is th these are probably going back several weeks. So where are we in reality? And I think that is what's concerning them. And they're right to be concerned. You know, everybody should be concerned. But Spain, Spain hasn't gone away. France shows the lag. Mm. I mean, you can begin to see the lag working mm by looking at Spain and France, because they are a couple of weeks ahead of us. And there is no denying that fatalities there have gone up, as mm. have hospitalizations. But it's nothing like the return to the fatalities no, that's of right. hospital. Yeah, that's, that's, that's right, yeah. Um, you have been talking... Several months ago. No, that's, that's completely right, yeah. And it's mainly younger people. The worry is that as we all have to go back inside mm. through the winter months, yeah. and if we were then hit by a secondary yes. flu virus epidemic, then we could have a very nasty situation. It's incumbent on all of us to show a bit of personal accountability, isn't it, in the end? Um, 
Piers, I know you've been talking all the way through this about um, testing and mm. the lack of testing. And yesterday, health bosses were forced to apologise over the failure of their coronavirus testing system. You'd think that, at the very least, those that would get the testing would be the doctors, the teachers and school pupils. And yet yesterday, they were very frustrated because they were also unable to get these tested. And they're saying that the system's on the verge of collapse. Well, it's been a total shambles, as has the testing policy from the very start of this. Remember that in the middle of March, when this pandemic was really beginning to rage, mm. we decided to stop all community testing and only tested people in hospitals. We sent 25,000 elderly people back to care homes without testing to mm. see if they had the virus, creating a secondary wave of the epidemic. The, the testing we keep being told is world class. I watched an interview with uh, an epide epidemiologist on Channel 4 News yesterday, a very eminent uh, doctor in France, and she said they're testing a million people a week in France. They should be doing 10 million. And please, in the UK, heed the warnings of what we have got wrong in France. Mm. And I was very struck by her very serious tone. The testing is key because until you get a vaccine or until you get drugs as with HIV, which stop people dying, then we have got to live with this virus and it remains very dangerous. There's no sign that it's, it's reducing in its potency. And the way to do that is to test, test, test and track people and isolate them. And it's just not happening. We had a guy on Good Morning Britain this morning. He drove for three hours with his two young children yeah. and then didn't get a test. His father died of COVID in a care home. Uh, and he was just at his wit's end. He went, I, I can't even get one when my kids are showing symptoms. Mm. It, it's got to be better than it is. Yeah. You, you, Andrew, you were obviously looking at other countries. You were talking about Spain. You were talking about France. Um, and uh, and you know, here's clear evidence from a, from a respected epidemiologist that there are lessons to be learned. Um, and, uh, and yet still, we're, we're making mistakes. Well, the lessons to be learned were there from day one, from Germany, from South Korea, from Taiwan, from New Zealand, all sorts of places that have done a lot better than we have. I mean, Peel says the, the testing business has been a shambles. I think that's unfair to shambles. Um, <laughs> it's, it, it, it's remarkable. We have one of the biggest and most sophisticated health systems in the world. We have one of the sophisticated and most advanced university systems in the world with world-class medical schools. We have one of the biggest big pharma industries in the world with laboratory testing. And yet we learn this week that we cannot continue to test the way we have because we've run out of laboratory capacity. I mean, I just find that unbelievable. This was supposed to be a world-class, a world-beating system. I had the health secretary today tell us on uh, television and on the radio that if you haven't got system, uh, uh, the symptoms, don't go and get tested. Mm. But the whole point of his operation Moonshot was that we'd be able to test everybody and test everybody regularly. And we could do it locally. I mean, I can go uh, 10 miles from here, be tested for free and get the results in 10 minutes. Yeah. Uh, and we're nowhere near that in Brittany. World-class testing system does not mean driving 150 miles there and back. It beggars belief that ministers have not got a hold of this from a pandemic that started in March. We, um, let's, uh, let's leave this uh, point um, uh, and discuss something else that I think is very pressing, especially to peers. Um, and it's the, uh, it's the end, peers, of keeping up with the Kardashians. Well, I know that Andrew will share my utter devastation that the Kardashians uh, are being sent into the great TV graveyard in the sky. Are you as grief-stricken as I am, Andrew, by this? Why do you I have no so idea much? who they are. <laughs> <laughs> well, why, it, why do you uh, hate, well, a, hate the Kardashians? I have to say, Kardashians, you are... Kardashians an Iranian name. Is it, is it a documentary series on... a? An Iranian dynasty? <laughs> you, In a way, yeah. You are Armenian, <laughs> actually, but they... Oh, you are. I always think this. You are really, really mean, because they are human. They are, they are a bunch people of with talentless feet. wastrels. Why? Do who you? have made billions by conning the world that there's something compelling really about them. Many people are entertained. People What's like, entertaining like watching... about them? Oh, it is. What is? It is. What it's like candy floss for the brain, and sometimes exactly. you just need that. When we try putting candy GMB floss in your brain and see how you get left, exhausted. It is. Go home and put I literally felt on. the few times I accidentally <laughs> caught it on television, I could literally feel my brain cells starting to erode. I could feel myself getting more stupid. They have done nothing but make the world more stupid, 
And I'm afraid that, that the end of the Kardashians <laughs> is a moment for... This is a rare moment in a horrible year where we should come together as a country well, in a moment of national you've jubilation. You've hung out with the Kardashians. Huh? You've hung out with the Kardashians. I used to hang out with them. I, actually, I, I tell you what, Kim Kardashian, I got on fine with right to the moment she began doing all the topless selfies and flipping the bird with her mate Emily Ratajkowski and claiming it was in the name of feminism and liberation for women. What a load of nonsense. And I don't like the idea of there are gazillion followers, young, you impressionable girls, thinking that's how to get on in life. Some, you started this conversation saying people are entitled to their opinions. Yes, and, as and I'm as entitled to heard. mine. You love them, I think they're ridiculous. What does Andrew and it is, a, it is a great moment for the world, oh. Andrew, that the Kardashians are being removed from the public gaze. <laughs> Uh, I'm afraid I'm going to have to take your word for that because <laughs> I, there is a, absolutely nothing I can bring to this conversation <laughs> which will be of any use to anybody. <laughs> and, that. and that is a very honest answer. <laughs> it, it really uh, Andrew, thank, thank you very you, much Andrew. indeed. Obviously, you've been doing a bit of working out there behind you. It looks like you've got... Have you got a bit of gym kit there behind you? Yes, I find if I look at it for at least 10 minutes a day, <laughs> uh, it, I'm already much fitter than I was before I stopped looking Very at it. And, uh, and, ju and just so that you know, you've just had a FedEx delivery. <laughs> yes, I know. That's why the dogs went for all these. <laughs> the, the, uh, the FedEx delivery guy is now currently in that local clinic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, you both. Thank My you pleasure, as always. Much. Thank you for Thank having you. me. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>